Hey, welcome to the Lockdown Lookup. Well, we're about to have a change in subject for the Lockdown Lookup daily devotions. We're going to be moving on today from the subject of the fruit of the Spirit to the subject of the armor of God. So from Galatians 5, moving on to Ephesians chapter 6. So as we looked at the fruit of the Spirit, what we saw is the possibility the opportunity of living a, a, this kind of Christian life that includes these wonderful characteristics of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. It's this picture of this wonderful, fruitful Christian life. And we spoke about what each of these characteristics are and how to pursue them. But what we did not talk much about is the reality that there is opposition to living this wonderful, flourishing Christian life. There is opposition. In Galatians chapter 5, in the context of that passage, the opposition is called the flesh. Uh, so we see in verse 16 of Galatians 5 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. So it names a source of opposition in living this fruitful, wonderful Christian life is the flesh. However, it turns out there's more than one source of opposition in living a flourishing Christian life. There, in fact, there are three sources of opposition. There is the world, the flesh, and the devil. So when we speak about the opposition that comes from the world, what we mean is kind of worldview or secular culture. I think this is what Jesus had in mind when he uh, spoke through the parable of the sower and the seed that was thrown onto uh, uh, sown onto thorny ground. And as the seed started to take root and grow and become fruitful around it, thorns grew up and choked the life out of that seed. And when Jesus explains this parable, he says that those thorns are the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches that very literally choked out what was fruitful so it's a it's a very powerful source of opposition is the secular culture and the world that we live in is opposed to living the ways of Jesus so there is the world there is the flesh as described in Galatians 5 and I just love the way that Paul describes the battle against the flesh in Romans uh, chapter 7 where he says I do not do the thing that I want I do the thing that I hate for I know nothing good dwells inside of me I have the desire to do what is right but not the strength to carry it out so he just speaks about that struggle the opposition that comes from the flesh so there's the opposition from the world there's opposition from the flesh and then there is opposition from the devil. So the devil is real. He is an intelligent, powerful spirit being that hates God, hates Jesus, hates the kingdom of God, hates those in the kingdom of God, hates those about to come into the kingdom of God. He is diabolically opposed to the ways of Jesus and the ways of God. It is a very real source of opposition in a Christian's life. That does not mean, however, that we should be afraid. We should not be afraid. Just remember Easter Sunday, Colossians 2 verse 15. He, Jesus, disarmed the rulers and authorities, the spiritual powers, and put them to open shame by triumphing over them. Jesus is victorious over evil and over the devil. But that also includes us, those who have faith in Jesus, those that are in the kingdom of Jesus. We also have victory and we also have authority over this source of opposition. So Luke chapter 10, Jesus says to disciples, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Remember that? Then he goes on to say this, Nevertheless, 
Don't rejoice in this. Don't rejoice in this authority you have over the evil one. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Which is really important as we approach this subject of spiritual warfare and the authority that we have as Christians in standing strong against the opposition that comes from the devil. What's important is we are not supposed to deny the reality of the evil one. We are not supposed to underestimate the opposition from the evil one. But we're also not supposed to glorify him. Sometimes the subject people just end up talking about a little bit too much in a way that even seems to give the devil some kind of uh, glory in all the attention that we pay him. No, Jesus says, rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. That's where all the glory goes because he has defeated Satan. So what this means, the subject of spiritual warfare and the subject for the next 10 weeks as we explore Ephesians chapter 6 is that we are not supposed to be afraid of the devil, of evil. We're not supposed to be afraid, but we should be aware. We should be aware of the methods, of the schemes. You're going to see that in our passage, of the schemes that the devil has to oppose us living a fruitful, flourishing, ultimately victorious Christian life. Don't be afraid, but we should be aware of his opposition. So that's the context of our passage of the armor of God. And I want to read to you the armor of God, just the beginning of that passage today, as we set ourselves up to talk through all of these pieces of armor. So Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to read just verse 10 to 13 today. In the next few weeks, we'll get into the actual pieces of armor. So it says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. And explore what that means tomorrow, uh, on Monday. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in these evil days, and having done all, to stand firm.